So today I'm talking about the early 20th century, mostly from 1900 to 1930. Let's get right into it. The first major movement of the early 20th century was Cubism, and it lasted from 1907 to about 1918. The most famous two artists from this movement were Picasso and Brock. In each, the specific types of Cubism were embodied. Picasso used analytic Cubism for most of his career. He used Cubism to analyze a subject by breaking it apart before reassembling it. Brock used synthetic Cubism where he used multimedia and he did a lot of collages and even in his paintings he would use other forms like sand and rope. In the end it really was a transition from literal art to conceptual art. Now, Futurism, a movement from 1909 to 1929, was a growth out of Cubism. Started in Italy, its main focuses were about speed, innovation, and change. Artists who subscribed to this movement believed that war was good and cleansing. The most famous artist from this period was Baccioni, whose work, Unique Forms of Continuity in Space from 1912, is still in the Met today. At the Armory Show in New York in 1913, a lot of modern artists caused a scandal like Duchamp and Matisse when they exhibited works that no one had really seen before. No one had seen such flashy or absolutely ridiculous works of art before. After that came World War I, or better known as the Great War. With it came communism and fascism. Now, in the beginning, fascism was actually thought of as a good thing. It was a positive growth out of capitalism. However, it was seized by Mussolini and Hitler and turned into a weapon of power. The technology of destruction was introduced at this time with modern innovations in airfare, trench warfare, and tank warfare. There were over 25,000 miles of trenches and over 10 million soldiers died total, many of them in those very trenches. At the same time, almost 15 million people died in Europe from the Spanish flu. Things were not looking up for most of the world. However, in the end, the Treaty of Versailles was signed and there was high hopes that things would get better from there on up. After the war, the movement called Dada was founded in 1916. It only lasted until about 1923 but its legacy lives on till today. The word Dada means hobby horse in French, but no one knows whether that was the original purpose of the term. A lot of people speculate that it's really just a ridiculous term meant to apply to the entire genre. The movement which was founded in Zurich really played into the idea that no logic or sense could come and touch this art. In cities like Paris, Cologne, New York, and Berlin, Artists like Man Ray and Roost and Duchamp were making ridiculous sculptures out of found objects and collages. They wanted to embrace a more irrational, intuitive, nihilistic, and absurd and playful worldview rather than a more serious one like their prior counterparts. In addition to that, they also wanted to juxtapose the horrors of the war that they had just gone through. After them came the Surrealists. Surrealism believes in super-reality, which is a half-state between reality and the dream state. The movement was started after the writings of Freud became popular. Although he wasn't the first, he was one of the most notable people to talk about the findings of the mind. Since then, however, Freud's findings have been denounced. The goal of the movement was to tap into suppressed feelings and ideas. They subscribed to the idea of automatism or automatic painting where instead of painting deliberately they kind of just let their hand go where it will. They also had a style called veristic which was incredibly realistic painting that was weird but strangely precise. And like the Dadaists they believed in assemblage but rather than using physical objects they instead created objects in their world that they were painting. Artists from this movement include Oppenheim, Brancusi, and Dali. The Harlem Renaissance was a period of extreme flourishing in Harlem, New York. The community there was experiencing an uptick in how much art was created there. And it wasn't just painting and sculpture. Along with the art, there was also new music being composed, new books being written, and poetry as well. 
Artists like Aaron Douglas were known for making statements with their art and wouldn't shy away from using very scandalous titles to get their message across. After World War I, America was all right for a bit, but then the stock market crashed and created the Great Depression, and many artists were out of a job. It was already hard enough before the Depression to make money, but now it was almost impossible. So the U.S. government stepped in and created the Works Progress Administration, a administration which focused on hiring and commissioning artists to create public works. Sometimes these works were on large walls and they were more like murals, but other works were just private paintings that were commissioned and paid for by the U.S. government to keep these artists in work and to try and keep spirits high despite the depression. Painters and muralists like Thomas Hart Benton, Grant Wood, Edward Hopper, George O'Keefe, and Alfred Stieglitz were just some of the many who were commissioned by the U.S. government to paint and create works of art for the public to enjoy. It wasn't just painters though. Photography was becoming more and more popular, and photographers like Dorothea Lange documented the day-to-day -day life of people who were suffering the most under the Depression. Ansel Adams was another photographer who was commissioned under this period, but rather than capture the daily lives of people, he went out into nature and using very wide-angle ling lenses, captured the beauty and splendor of the country to remind people that not everything was as bad as it seemed. So. That's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed and I have one video left so I'll see you after that. Bye!